Cartoon Network was a force to be reckoned with during the 1990s and was responsible for some of the most iconic cartoons to ever air on television. Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, and Courage the Cowardly Dog, to name a few. But one in particular would go on to become a pop culture phenomenon. The Powerpuff Girls. This was the first bona fide hit for the network, and it spawned an avalanche of merchandise, plus a theatrical movie, reboots, and even an anime spinoff. Now, how often does something like this happen? A Western show getting an anime spinoff? Like, I know that Drawn Together inspired Panty and Stocking, and that there was an anime spinoff for Lilo and Stitch, which, by the way, we'll talk about in a future video. But it's safe to say that Powerpuff Girls Z was a bit of an anomaly. One that I heard of as a teen and desperately wanted to see, but could never get my hands on. So, why was it shrouded in mystery and was so hard to get a hold of? What are the main differences between the original Powerpuff Girls and its anime spinoff? What did they change in the original when bringing it over to Japan? And why the hell does it even exist at all to begin with? And the most burning question of all, why is Miss Bellum objectively worse in every single way imaginable in the anime compared to the original? Why is she blonde? That red hair was iconic. When are those girls going to learn how to defend the city without wrecking it? I don't think you should complain, sir. It was you who called them in. That woman is so fired. So once again, the video is sponsored. Thanks to Opera J. Yes. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm terminally online. So it's, it's my cross to bear for fun, for work, for reasons. <laughs> and I had no idea how much I was missing out on by not using Opera GX. I downloaded Opera GX for free earlier this year, and it's been my go-to ever since. It just oozes with personality, especially with the GX mods. Look at all the anime, it's just glorious. Complete with background music, custom browser and keyboard sounds, wallpaper and colors. With the exact same thing, but for Retrowave? Boom, done. And of course, the best anime girl there is, Saul Goodman. Look at him staring into your soul. It's an animated wallpaper via the GX mod. These are but a few of the mods you can hit up and use to customize your Opera GX browser. Like I am legit such a fan of the animated wallpapers. It just makes my online browsing experience so much more fun and alive instead of a boring default browser homepage. Another cool feature I like is how my video player will pop out so I can keep like watching my video even though I'm scrubbing through my Twitter feed or working on the script of a new video. Plus I can log into my Spotify via Opera GX and listen to my music through the browser. I could also like log into my Twitch too. No, tell me he was streaming, which is super convenient. Speaking of convenience, Opera GX is also equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser to GX, like browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies. Also, additionally, by using the link in the description, you can see my latest 12 uploads from my channel in your GX corner. Like right, right over there, boom, click it, there it is. So stop torching yourself with your dinosaur browser and get Opera GX at opera.gg slash saberspark. Hit up that link in the description down below and download Opera GX today. It's free and full of quality of life features and customizations that makes browsing the internet a blast. Go hit them up today. On second thought, I don't think I want to control this site. I'm afraid of what it will do to my own brain. In order to fully unravel the mystery that is Powerpuff Girls Z, one must start with the show it is based on, The Powerpuff Girls, 2016. I'm ready to save my sisters. But yeah, the original Powerpuff Girls. It was created by Craig McCracken and was one of his student films he made while attending Cal Arts in 1992. Originally known as Whoop Ass Stew, Craig would show his short in festivals until 1995 when he changed the name to Powerpuff Girls and submitted the short to Cartoon Network and its world premiere tunes animation program. A program that would showcase original animated concepts and pilots, with some using it as a springboard. 
such as Dexter's Lab, Courage, and of course, the Powerpuff Girls. The show got the order for a full series and would premiere as a cartoon cartoon on the channel. In fall of 1998, Powerpuff Girls made its official debut and was a hit that would go on to become the crown jewel of Cartoon Network. Folks, I remember watching this premiere with my sisters, and we all fell in love with the show. We were obsessed, and apparently so was everyone else. The premise, the characters, the music, the voice acting, the designs, the animation, every aspect of the series was fantastic. Now I can go on and on about the original, but for the sake of staying focused, let's move on. I do not reiterate, repeat, reinstate the same thing over and over again. I am clear, concise, to the point. I the original series would run for six seasons, and Cartoon Network pushed hard for Powerpuff Girls merchandise, video games, the aforementioned movie, and the main topic of this video, an anime adaptation called Powerpuff Girls Z. Now, according to Craig McCracken, the original Powerpuff Girls never took off in Japan, which wasn't too much of a surprise. This was mostly due to how Western shows were distributed at the time. However, the network believed the concept could find an audience if the show was more tailored for a Japanese audience, with their particular taste and culture in mind. Powerpuff Girls Z is the product of a three-way collaboration between Cartoon Network and Anaplex, a Japanese production company responsible for Full Metal Alchemist and Madoka Magica. Aniplex and Cartoon Network would act as producers, and Toei Animation, responsible for anime such as Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon, would be in charge of the animation. Miho Shimagasa was brought on as character designer, having previously directed several episodes of Sailor Moon, as well as designing characters for Cutie Honey Flash. Craig would serve as an advisor during the early stages of production, providing insight into key tenets of the property that the showrunners needed in order for it to feel like Powerpuff Girls. When speaking on giving the spinoff his blessings, Craig said, quote, They really wanted to kind of re-envision the property. And when the idea was first pitched to me, the first thing I thought of was Batman. I mean, here is the character that's been reinterpreted so many different ways from the original Bob Kane version to the Adam West version to the Frank Miller version. And they all, its core, is still Batman. The foundation of the character is still the same." End quote. That being said, once the pieces were in place, Craig would no longer have any involvement, instead letting the Japanese studios make the show they wanted to make. Hell, Craig is even on record saying that he has never seen an episode of Z himself. There's also this rumor in fan circles that Craig was 100% hands off with Z and almost sort of hated it, which, hey, isn't true. So it's cool to learn that he was more hands on with bringing his creation to Japan. He also knew when to bow out and allow these studios to have fun with their own creative interpretations of the Powerpuff universe. As part of their efforts to make the concept of Powerpuff Girls more appealing to Japanese audiences, the girls were made into magical girls and had their powers thrust upon them rather than being born with them, like in the original. Now, the magical girl genre is extremely popular in Japan, so this change totally makes sense. The girls were also aged up to middle schoolers in this attempt to give younger girls older idols. Older idols who wear pretty clothes and, of course, would want to buy all their matching accessories and outfits. Yeah, never lose sight of the real goal, am I right? Yeah, I see over there, Cartoon Network. Nice try. Uh, speaking of the girls, Z would also go on to receive a radically new main trio. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. These are new characters altogether, who just so happen to use some of the key design elements of the original girls. But get this, they're not sisters. Our Blossom stand-in is Momoko Akatsumi. Hey, I actually like looked that one up to say it right, all right? So don't even at me. <laughs> our Bubble stand-in is Mayoko Kotukuji, and our Buttercup is Karu Matsubara. The personalities of the girls is where we get our first big departure from the original series, outside of aesthetics. In a strange move, Momoko and Mayoko almost seem written with Blossom and Bubble's personalities, but they're swapped 
where Momoko is sort of this airhead and Mayoko is more of this popular girl with her head on her shoulders. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the change is quite jarring and I don't care for it. Now, I support most of the creative liberties that were taken in this adaptation, even if I don't care for them. Mojo Jojo, for example, is a downgrade, but he gets the job done and still feels like Mojo. Blossom and Bubble switching personalities, though? Ah, uh, no, I don't like that one. And it's really hard to ignore. Karu, our buttercup stand-in, is more or less the same as her Western counterpart. She's a tomboy who doesn't like wearing skirts and wants to play sports and be tough. A big part of her character, though, is actually learning to be a part of the team because she was originally such a loner. By comparison, the other two girls are super girly, while anime Buttercup is not. Honestly, it almost feels like she should have been the main character as she feels like she has the most to overcome. The other biggest change outside the girls and their personalities is their relationship to Professor Utonium. In the original series, the girls are created when the professor is attempting to make himself daughters via sugar, spice, and everything nice. But on accident, added Chemical X. To an American audience, we didn't question it. A lone dad with three superhero daughters? Yeah, that checks out. Now, let's go beat up the flamboyant villain. But get this. During the early production of Powerpuff Girls Z, the Japanese crew was hesitant to include Utonium at all and instead wanted a young science-obsessed boy named Ken to be the one responsible for giving the girls their powers. Yeah, that's a big change, right? According to Craig, there was some worry over what the implications of showing a single father in a kid's show would be, stating that in Japan, a single dad would likely mean his wife passed away, in which case it would be his responsibility to remarry so the girls would have a mother. Or, apparently even worse, that he was divorced, in which case the mother would almost certainly get custody. However, uh, Craig held firm that the father figure is an important part of the property's identity. And so a compromise was made, where Utonium is more of a mentor figure. Kim was also reworked as the professor's son. And the professor was also given a wife, which sort of begs the question, why didn't they just give the professor a wife and keep the girls as sisters and daughters of the couple. <laughs> uh, go figure. But hey, uh, maybe you lose the son, though. Uh, at least in the Western version of the show, the prof has a bad track record on that front. Oh, thank you, Father. I was once a vengeful mad genius bent on destroying mankind. Well, now I'm a vengeful mad genius bent on destroying mankind with superpowers! The majority of the iconic side characters of the show from the people of Townsville. Oh wait, yeah, oh, hold on. I forgot to say, uh, this does not take place in Townsville. The show takes place in Tokyo City, uh, which, you know, hey, that's fine. And we get to see the likes of like the mayor, Miss Bellum, Miss Keen, and of course the amazing villains from the original series. Now, some of these characters get some visual overhauls, such as Mojo and him, while other ones are just the literal anime version of their Western design, like Fuzzy Lumpkins, for example. That being said, we unfortunately see some significant downgrades as far as the writing for these characters go. And Z, Mojo Jojo, is still the girl's main antagonist, but is treated more like a thorn in their side to laugh at rather than an actual villain. Craig is even on record stating that the villains in the original series were on a scale of silliness, where a character like Mojo Jojo can be goofy at one moment and then terrifying during another. Kind of what we did with the villains is, I, in my mind, I created this scale of how evil and how dumb. And basically, the amoebas are on the bottom end of that as the dumbest, pathetic, you can't achieve anything villains. And him is on the other end as the so most evil right villain. There. And Mojo's great because he's right in the middle. So you can make him stupid if you wanted to, but you could push him and make him a little more evil. And then the other villains kind of fall in in different levels on that kind of graph in my mind. For Z though, it's just mainly silly. Plus, there are some other stark changes in his story. For example, his origin with the professor was totally erased, with Mojo Jojo instead being a zoo animal that happened to get hit with a black beam of Chemical Z and just decides to be a bad guy. 
Oh, by the way, the girls got their powers when a robotic dog of the professor's son drops Daifuku into Chemical X, which turns it into Chemical Z, and then said chemical was used by Ken and a ray gun to fight climate change, and the laser deflected off an iceberg in Tokyo City, and the ray light hit the girls and gave them powers that sometimes run out, plus new outfits and accessories. <laughs> Talk about convoluted. Uh, at least the original show was just straight into the point, right? Now, one of the better adaptations is Sedusa, who instead of being a femme fatale trying to mooch off of the professor, is instead a shy tea shop owner named Annie, whose insecurities and jealousy of Miss Bellum turn Sedusa into an alter ego that has all of the confidence that Annie wishes she had. She gets really cool identity-stealing powers where she can transform into other people and steal their faces, which is a really fun way to interpret the character. And then you got him, who serves as the series' big bad guy. There's actually some lore with his character in the show, as he has existed throughout history and was even defeated and locked away by a version of the girls in the past. Design and writing-wise, He's not nearly as menacing as his Western counterpart. Him was menacing in the original, and his delivery and plotting always struck me as the most challenging obstacles for the girls. Him was genuinely just that terrifying. Well, at least most of the time. And squat, and up. Okay, legs up, two, three, arms out, and reach. So, with all of these top-notch collaborators in the world of cartoons and anime working together, how is Powerpuff Girls Z as a show? It is, uh, just very overwhelmingly okay. The show, design-wise, is amazing. Adapting such an iconic-looking show as the Powerpuff Girls could not have been easy. And I do want to give a big shout-out to the work that Miho Shimogasa did keeping the important features of the girls while also adding to their looks in a way that feels really iconic could not have been easy. Now, for my friend Tricky Kappa, who helped me to write this video, he mentioned how just seeing a group shot of the girls in an anime magazine as a kid sent him on a multi-year hunt to try and watch the show. That the aesthetic was just that good and captured him, and I can relate. My little sister and I desperately tried to find the series. We were morbidly curious, and the inner fan service was calling our names. But we could never find it until many years later. However, with that being said, it feels like all the inspiration stopped there. The animation itself is serviceable. Like, it's not bad, but it's also nothing to write home about. The action in Powerpuff Girls is part of what made the original show stand out so much. Action sequences were dynamic and exciting, but the sequences in Z feel really uninspired and sometimes slow. Now, I'm sure that there were budgetary reasons, and Toei is known for pumping out a lot of anime and on the cheap. But it's such a shame that after 52 episodes, I can't really think of any iconic sequences outside of the transformation of the girls. It's disappointing that Shimogasa's character designs never really got to be in motion in a way they deserved. It's also so strange because iconic action sequences are usually something anime is leagues ahead of over Western animation. Craig is even on record saying that anime was a big influence on the action sequences of the original. But when an actual anime studio got their hands on it, the sequences only felt subpar. The show's writing also feels incredibly generic, which might be the biggest bummer of all. I mean, when you look at the studios involved, they are responsible for some of the most iconic anime adaptations of all time. DBZ, Full Metal Alchemist, One Piece, Gurren Lagann, and Sailor Moon. The magical girl template for most people. You'd think they would be able to craft something special with a property filled with as much iconic stuff as Powerpuff Girls. But as I watched it, it just sort of felt like stuff was happening for the sake of happening. There was no care put into the stakes or developing anyone's personalities to any meaningful degree. The best episodes of Z are episodes like the introduction of Fuzzy Lumpkins or Princess, where they're more or less just straight up adapting the original versions of those episodes, which is really sad when you think about it. Oh, the best version of this is when you just copied someone else's work. Uh, that's That sucks. 
Now, the show wraps up with a pretty cool arc, though, where the girls have to go back in time to capture the white Z-rays in order to stop him, who had been defeated by a past version of the girls and the professor. And they encounter all these historical figures like Cleopatra and Da Vinci while zooming around the timeline in these time machine mech versions of themselves that look pretty damn cool. Definitely giving me Dynamo vibes. But still beyond liking the concept and some of the jokes, it's really hard to care about the final arc because nothing leading up to it really stands out. The show just ends up feeling like a checklist of anime tropes needed to sell things to kids. Magical girls? Check. A, a cute animal sidekick? Check. Robot suits? Ho oh, ho, triple check. Overall, Powerpuff Girls Z just feels really hollow. Again, it's such a shame because the show was elusive for so long that all people had to go off of were stills and the awesome character designs. Diehard fans had to hunt down the show for years, catching scenes here and there, but never fully subbed and never full episodes. That when fans finally got the chance to watch it, expectations were high, and Powerpuff Girls Z, in my opinion, did not deliver. Also, the English dub is, uh, yeah, meh, it's, it's, eh. Fast acting relief from prickly scalp, heat rash, and flaming brain stops indigestion and is especially effective against stomach explosions? Are your legs melting again? Then this cooling compress can help. But hey, good luck living up to the quality of the original's voice acting. That's a hard act to follow. Maybe high expectations are a factor of why so many Western viewers thought the anime was just meh. Visually great, narratively hollow. And that if expectations were more tempered, then maybe the adaptation would be more palatable. But hey, who knows? Still, it's really cool that an anime adaptation of a Western show even exists at all. And Lord knows, it is a million times better than the 2016 reboot. But props to Craig for providing guidance when needed, but also knowing when to back away so the Japanese crew could do their own thing. Although maybe he should have stuck around a bit longer given the quality of the writing of the show. That being said, I can't help but wish Powerpuff Girls Z was better, not just because I love the Powerpuff Girls, but because I would have loved to see more Western to Japanese experiments like this. What does an anime version of, let's say, Kids Next Door or Courage the Cowardly Dog or Lilo and Stitch look like? Oh wait, that's right, that's a, that's a thing. Huh, guess we'll talk about that one down the road. <laughs> Probably gonna be leagues better than the live action remake coming out here soon. Disney, please. Just stop. She's Ohana, family, and not just a little monster, but to you and me as well. Ohana. I don't have friends. I got family. How?